am 3 no 3 Thanks for watching. Warning. Do not try anything I do without taking proper precautions. Protect your skin, eyes, and lungs. This is part 5 of deconstructing the brass golden chicken looking thing. Hey wait, 3. That's not our chicken. What happened to the brass chicken? I don't have time for this. Talk to the editor. Let's get started. So this is everything we accumulated from the first four episodes. This is the undissolved particles of brass. This is all of the sediment, which may contain silver. This is the copper substance with the black flakes in it from the last video. These are the zinc strips that we used in the last video. Interesting thing about these, you can see there's still some black spots on this one, but when they came out of the solution after displacing the copper, they appeared to be all black. Now they appear to be gray, an oxidized form of zinc. They're not shiny and silver like when they started. Zinc oxide's usually a white powder, but in the transition, it seems that it turns black and then turns gray and then turns into a white powder. This is all of the copper acetate, zinc acetate solution that we have. And this is the 37 milligrams of what I thought might be silver plate. And then this is what looks like zinc acetate with the copper precipitate and more black flakes in the bottom. This is just some distilled water to rinse with. And then we have the empty 500 milliliter beaker and the evaporation dish. So we're going to take the lid off this here and we are going to decant off all of what appears to be zinc acetate into the empty beaker. And then we're going to wash it about eight times. And finally, we're left with this. So the super scientific hot plate is going to get double duty. It is going to try to reduce the zinc acetate and dry the copper substance with black flakes at the same time. So now the copper is dry enough, so we're going to take it off and turn the heat up to max so we can reduce this down faster. After it started to get almost dry, it started doing this. It kind of reminded me of making candy out of sugar water. So I took the copper substance and put it in a petri dish with the other. You can see the new stuff wasn't completely dry, so it's in little balls next to the powdery stuff that we had before. So breaking up what we had in the beaker here, it does kind of look like rock candy. It sure left the beaker a mess, but fortunately, zinc acetate is supposed to be water soluble, so it should be an easy cleanup. So the beaker did clean up relatively easy, and here's the wash water from it. Now, interestingly enough, it didn't all dissolve. It left behind this white powdery substance. And this is just from the wash water. This is the solids that we pulled off. We'll weigh the solids out here. A little over 21.7 grams. I tried to boil this off for a while with the super scientific hot plate to see if it was zinc acetate and it would dissolve. The white powder would not dissolve, so it leads me to believe that I made zinc oxide. Turn it off and let it cool. Hey, wait, three. Why do you think that white powder is zinc oxide? So if you heat zinc acetate, it decomposes to zinc oxide. And this was something that I knew. I didn't realize at what temperature that occurred. Doing follow-up research, I found anywhere from 160 to 250 degrees Celsius. Whatever it is exactly, I think we hit it with a super scientific hot plate.
So then we put the big pieces in a beaker to try to see if we could get them to dissolve. Well, so far it looks like they're dissolving or at least breaking apart into the liquid. It looked like there was also zinc oxide in this, so we decided to put it all together and then put it all on the super scientific hot plate to see if anything else would dissolve. After a short time, we killed the heat and let it cool off. It took about two hours to get what we suspected to be zinc oxide to settle to the bottom and leave us with a clear solution. Then we decanted off the suspected zinc acetate solution into the beaker on the super scientific hot plate. The zinc oxide was washed many times and then we started reducing the zinc acetate. Again, the super scientific hot plate's getting double duty. It's trying to reduce the zinc acetate and dehydrate the zinc oxide at the same time. I thought this was interesting to film. I hope you find it interesting as well. So this is the suspected zinc oxide in a petri dish. It's almost dry, but not completely. We'll transfer over the remaining zinc acetate into the evaporation dish. And then we'll try to reduce it some more on the super scientific hot plate. I was really careful not to let the temperature get too high and I believe what we have here is zinc acetate and not zinc oxide. So it's getting reduced and I wanted to get it out of the evaporating dish and into a petri dish soon and this happened overnight i apologize for the really horrible camera work but i wanted you to see that the entire bottom was coated in small crystals and there was a clump of big crystals in the middle of the dish I'll leave you with a few stills here. I think these are relatively pure zinc acetate crystals in this dish. The end.